There are so many dark clouds in modern physics. Let's go back to classic physics of early 1900s and ask classic questions for elemental particles. Maybe it is time to revisit quantum mechanics and theory of general relativity. This is our new direction of physics. Today we're going to continue our videos for the new direction of physics. This is video 5. We're going to still continue on talking about the, the self-interacting field theory I'm proposing. Okay. <clears throat> so in the last video, basically we rewrite the self-interacting field equations into Einstein's general relativity format. Okay. So this is a new uh, version of the Newton's law of gravity. Okay. We find that uh, Einstein's general relativity missing the self-interacting term. <clears throat> yeah, the self-interaction term is missing. So basically, uh, general relativity okay, goes to Newton's law of gravity. Okay. okay. <clears throat> okay. But if Newton's law of gravity is modified, the general relativity also needs to be modified. But in the approximation, okay, we will see that in the approximation, we can still use in the general relativity. That means we can use in Hawking theory for the black holes to study the strong interaction. We will see that uh, Dirac large number is introduced. So then we see that if we assume that pi zero is an irreducible mass of a strong interaction black hole, then we see these, their mass are calculated. Okay, so it's very close to uh, the real mass of those particles. Okay, that's the last video. This video we're going to talk about the dynamic meaning of self-interaction. Yes, we see a new term in the Newton's law of gravity. So, but this term, it's different from Newton's law of gravity. And we'd like to see the magnitude of this term in the solar system. Okay, so this is for this video. The tensor format of uh, self-interacting uh, Newton's law of gravity or self-interacting scalar field equations, it became like this. Because in the weak field limit, phi is close to 1. What we do is we just put this term into 1. Okay? So we see the Newton's law or a scalar version of uh, uh, general relativity equations, where this term is missing in Einstein's field equations. Okay, so let's assume that there are two masses. Okay, just like Newton field. We in the approximation we can still use use Newton's law of gravity. So what do we do? We do an expansion. We compare the terms. So if we assume mass one is large, mass two is very small. Okay, we can expand these equations, keep the large term, smaller term, neglect it. Okay, so what we see, so I hope uh, people see that I'm trying to do what in the solar system. So this is the mass of our sun, okay? I mean, the distance is not in scale. So what do we see that the mass of the sun is so big, okay? So we have the mass one, okay? That's mass 2, okay? I mean, Jupiter is big in our solar system, but compared with the sun, it's still small, okay? When we, the, the field goes out from the sun, okay, it's being focused by Jupiter. We will see the effects of that, okay? So what happened that if mass 1 is the sun, okay, Mass 2 is Jupiter, 
from the previous figure, figure we see that from the figure we see that the field will be bent by the Saturn or by the Jupiter. Okay, so Einstein's equation, I mean in the limit, Einstein's field equation doesn't give that, doesn't have the second term. Okay, but we have an extra term. We want to see the difference between the self-interacting Newton's law of gravity and the original version of Newton's law of gravity because of this term. We would like to estimate how big this term is in the solar system. And we will give a reason why we didn't see it. Okay? In the certain cases, we may be able to absorb it, but uh, in the normal cases, we cannot see it. Okay? So that means the equation of self-interacting Newton's law, it's observable, but not that easy. Let's expand, keep expanding that, okay? So what do we see? We de define R2 equals R theta, okay? So then what do we see? We have the solution, approximation of solution. The, the direction changes, causing, okay? So let's go back to the previous video. Let's go back to this, okay? So we have our original direction, theta, okay? We have the field one goes direct from the solar, from the sun, past Jupiter, that's line one, field one. Okay, we have field two being focused, field three being focused less. So what we're gonna see, we're gonna see a focusing effect. of the gravitation field. That's the term we are trying to introduce over here. Okay, what we see over here, we see that the field from the sun being bent, being focused by this. So the angle change of the field from the sun being changed by the Jupiter about this much, okay? That's the original force from the sun, okay? That's where the original angle of the amplification factor, okay? So what happened that, we go back to the previous figure here, okay? What we see that because of the bending, because the angle of beta, beta is very small. Okay, very small, okay? And then this change of the angle also small. Okay, that means delta theta, okay? It's also small, beta is small. Because the Jupiter is so far away from the sun and the radius is small, so the angle is also small. But then the change of the angle has to compare with original force. If we go back to the, this v presentation, we see that the force change, because the original theta needs to be designed. So that means you have a field goes from like this, okay, now being focused, okay. So the the line of the field is still the consistent, still the same. That means over this much or this much, okay? So what happened is that's the field one, field two, okay, the field three, because it's so far away from Ju Jupiter, so they don't change, okay? Line two, just off the shadow of the Jupiter, it's changed. Okay, so this is the amplification factor because of the angle change compared with the original angle. So the force change, originally we have an angle. Now the angle changed. So the force being amplified, original angle is small, but then the change, okay, being amplified. Okay, that's why I see that the original angle is like an amplification factor. That means the further away 
it has a amplification factor this is big okay because this it's r2 over r but it's reversed okay so that's big okay okay so that's why the angle change of the force due to the Jupiter it's causing the amplification of the force change from the Sun okay so if we assume the focus of the field like the relativity okay it's different from my SI self interacting Newton's law of gravity by a factor of two I mean Einstein's original theory also has that we will see that this factor will be recovered if we do the full theory of the new general relativity okay the deflection angle is small by Jupiter okay but the angle of Jupiter's radius over the distance of that so the force change if Saturn is just off it's just off the Jupiter okay so now it's just off the Jupiter okay so if we're if we're here if Saturn is here that's Jupiter okay if Saturn is here so this force became smaller but if it's within the shadow bigger okay this is became bigger this is smaller okay okay so that's the Saturn okay okay so that means it's about 0.81 times 10 to the minus 3 yeah it's very small okay that means the Saturn once it's behind the shadow of Jupiter behind the shadow of Jupiter this force became bigger but only by a very small fraction so this is why we didn't see it okay so then um, that results that it's observable if you pay attention if you don't pay attention because it's so small you cannot see it I think it's if uh, astronomers put enough effort we will be able to absorb this factor okay but because of so many years Saturn is behind the Jupiter you will see some effects in long term we can only see it okay but the trouble we're having now it's we need to pay such attention to see this okay if we can absorb this that's where this term okay where traditional Newton's law of gravity doesn't have this term so it doesn't have this effect okay because the angle of bending by Jupiter is small the angle of the radius over the distance of the Sun is also small so we cause in the amplification factor if the angle of Jupiter that's so small okay the chance of Saturn it's right in the shadow of Jupiter is small because if we put this into some scale okay let's say the Sun it's still so big okay the distance is like that okay so that's Jupiter okay so now Saturn is even further away from this now if we want this Saturn somewhere over here okay to be in the shadow or even let's say Jupiter is here okay let's say Jupiter is here okay that's Saturn if you want this Saturn right behind the Jupiter's shadow the chance is very small okay because Saturn and Jupiter meeting every 12 years okay but now because the angle is so small because of the Jupiter is so radius so small you have to be right in the shadow that's very slim okay the chance is very slim so if we want to see this maybe every thousand years that's why we didn't see this effect in our solar system some of my friends are saying Q you propose something not observable 
So it's like another theory, just different theory, okay? You propose another theory where it's not observable, okay? So every 11 years, even though it's small, okay, it still can be seen, but not like every day. We can see that or Saturn being taken by something. It's not so dramatic, okay? Because of this term, okay, and because the theory I'm proposing is mostly for macro scale and micro scale. So we will be able to see the effects, okay, even in the solar system. So um, in the next video, I'm going to propose something where you can really see it, okay. So this one, if we put enough effort, we can still see this, okay. So the next video, we're going to continue of this term in astrophysics. Yeah, not just focus on solar system. We're going to study all possibilities of the solar system and also all possible explanations what's happening by Jupiter, okay? So we will continue this in the macro scale. After this uh, next video, we're going back to the micro world. So we're, let's explore all the macro world first, okay, of this term. It's a simple term, but it has strong meaning in astrophysics, okay? Thank you.